Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you remember, we just did the uh, Nikon FE, or FG. Today we're going to have a look at the FE. Here's the size difference between the, uh, that's what I was saying, this FG is an awesome little camera. With many features. So today it's the Nikon FE. These are just my hookups for the, uh, for my uh, neck strap. So this is the Nikon FE, uh, 1978 to 1983. It's weight without the uh, lens is uh, 590 grams or 21 ounces. It's very flexible and, and very, very intelligently designed. Everything seems to just be where you need it to be. Professional round eyepiece. You know, it, it's, 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 a pretty, it's a perfect camera. It's a... Uh, when it first came out, the, the, a lot of the main photographers were afraid of it because of its battery. Uh, the way, because uh, it needs a battery to run except for the M90 mode. You know, it can still run like most Nikons without the battery. But it turned out that uh, after a while, they all realized that the batteries can last up to a couple of years in these. So here we go. The, uh, the, uh, it's got a battery gauge. Right on here. I don't know if you can see it. That lets you know if your batteries are going dead or not. It's a very handy, very, very good uh, gauge. It's got uh, automatic exposure lock. Now there's a, there's a feature. There's a feature. Uh, automatic exposure lock. And, and uh, if you don't know what that is, that means that you can uh, take your exposure reading do your focus and take your exposure reading right and uh, then uh, you can take your exposure reading as as we know if you followed uh, you, uh, how to do exposures properly you can find where you want to set your exposure it's a heavy weighted uh, center weighted uh, metering on this camera very good metering very accurate metering actually so let, let's say if I am in a scene and I find an area where I want to lift, you know, want to, want to keep the shadows and, and keep some detail in the shadows. Then what I would do is I would set my exposure on that area and then push the self timer in. Now that would lock your exposure. Then you could recompose and take your shot. So if that, that's the proper way to use this. Uh, uh, the, 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 a lot of people didn't understand that. So it's actually, uh, it's actually, it's, a, it's exposure control is better than most people know how to use it, right? So anyways, it was very accurate exposure control. It, uh, it has, uh, if you push this button here, you can have a uh, plus and minus, uh, or th this, this actually sets your, sorry, this sets your uh, ASA. And the ASA goes, uh, I think, from 3,200 3, uh, all the way down to 12, which is quite a quite a quite a range. It has uh, it has uh, electronic flash, but it doesn't have TTL metering flash like the FG has. See, so see, if you look at the FG, you see the extra ports here. This one actually does through the lens flash metering. So that, that FG is pretty special. So anyways, when you start using, the only way you know this camera is an FE is when you look at the back. You, you'll see in the serial numbers. But once you start holding this camera and using this camera, it quickly becomes your, your, uh, your, your favorite camera. The, the exposure needles that work inside the... To match up with the green and yellow and that they're instant it's very fast very fast is not a lagging uh, exposure control at all it has an auto mirror lockup so when you uh, set it on a tripod or do a self timer or do a long exposure which we'll get to in a, in a few seconds it'll automatically lock the the, the mirror up but no manual mirror lockup so there's a, a few lenses that you can't use on this. Uh, the really long from the 1960s, the deep, uh, the deep uh, 
fisheye lenses because you can't lock the mirror up. You, you, you can't use them on this. But other than that, the lenses from the, oh, from 1959 to today can be used on this. Well, of course, the G lenses, you're only going to get, uh, you know, whatever aperture their lowest aperture is. Uh, so it's, you know, you could, you could bother with the G lenses, but it, it's kind of, you know, so uh, definitely, uh, all the other lenses can be used on this camera. Very, 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 very futuristic, uh, universal design they put into this. It has become most people that purchase one of these, it becomes their favorite camera. And I am not immune to that whatsoever because it has become my favorite camera. It's, uh, it, I find myself just holding this camera just for the sake of holding it and playing with it. So it, it compels you. It compels you to hold the, the camera. It is quite, uh, it is quite unique. You push the button here and that's how you set your, uh, if you're going to do manual exposures or auto. The, the unique thing about this is that there's been reports when you do auto exposures, there has been reports that, uh, it will expose up to an eight hour exposure. I don't, I've never tested that. I've read it, but I've never tested it, but, uh, it's rated to do, uh, at least, at least one to two hour exposures automatically all the way uh, up to 4,000, 4 thousandths of a second. So, uh, so here we go again with, with, with the, uh, when you're in auto, like the FG, but it's not stepless like the FG. When you're in auto, it picks a lot more, you know, uh, shutter speeds than, than what you see listed here. It, uh, it can actually do four, four, uh, one four thousandths of a second shutter speed and all the way down to in between numbers and 100 and, and you know, 20. It, it, it'll pick a, a lot different shutter speeds on its own. The, uh, the, uh, the exposure compensation compensation is plus or minus two, and you lift this big dial up to set that. You can see the little red button here. Uh, it it can be used without the battery uh, if you put it in the M90. It has the bulb mode. Uh, you can put a, a cable release on it. It's got a very good counter window. If you got more than 36 exposures, it'll stop at 36, but you can still keep winding past 36 until all your exposures are gone. The uh, it had no caps that would fall off. These came exposed. There's no there was no caps to cover these. It used a, a modern battery, so the newer batteries. So its uh, its its exposure meter is. Pretty accurate, pretty, I, I checked it with the spot meter and checked it with the D300 and this one is very, very accurate metering. So, uh, and we'll do a test on that and then I'll be able to share a link back to this video because people want me to go through these cameras on these videos. So here's the uh, lens release. This lens is, uh, the lens I got it with was the 50 millimeter uh, uh two uh, f2 lens which is very 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 good lens i've had nothing but good photos from that and uh here we go it's the same it's it's just a uh it's it, it, you know it's an slr it has a uh the the same shutter system as a built to last forever as most of the other ones it has a flip up lever here where you can use ai and non-ai i have not uh i know it's supposed to flip up but i don't know how to make it flip up but yeah it, there's a certain procedure to flipping it up but this this tab flips up so you can put uh, non-ai or ai lenses on this so it, it uses all the lenses except for those older 1960s um uh, fish eye lenses that reach deep into the into the housing and hit the mirror because it doesn't have a, a manual mirror lockup it has a information card holder to let you know what film you got in there in case you uh, forget and this one is uh you you move this little lever here i hope you can see all this it's starting to get a bit dim in here 
and you open it up and as you can see inside this the, this camera is very 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 good condition it's it's amazing i've used this camera a few times and oh i just love this camera and and like i said i just find myself it just has become my favorite camera so uh we will be taking in the in the near future a trip out with this camera using the exposure properly i'm waiting for a shoe mount that uh that goes about this high that's adjustable for all these cameras so i can put a little i got a little canon sure shot that i'm going to be putting on here instead of just using my phone out the side and stuff or on a big gimbal i'm going to try putting a canon sure shot on here a small one and then i'm going to be doing point of view videos uh right out of it uh you know like a lot of other guys do it's it, it's only uh 780p but we'll see how that works it would be uh fun to try because it's really light i'm not about to go spend uh, two thousand dollars on another little camera to do point of view videos that's not gonna happen if worse comes to worse i can put my camera on my phone on here but i would like to free my phone up for some other things so uh so there we go there's the uh the the nikon or the nikon it depends on what uh what country you're from uh fe yeah uh, if you buy one of these cameras in really really good shape and uh, everything's functioning and working and and here's a point i need to let people know the the cameras i'm using that are functioning in that i when i buy i check over the cameras to make sure they're functioning and stuff I, you know, I cannot over over YouTube or over the internet just say, oh, this camera is a good camera, just buy this camera. Because I'm not there to see that camera or test that camera. So when you're buying used cameras off the internet, off of eBay or wherever, you know, it's buyer beware. You can't just rely on people saying, well, this is a good camera. So all of a sudden, you know, go out and buy it and find out you got a, a bad camera and then go, well, you told me to buy this camera. Well, I'm not doing that, right? We, I, I want to make that disclaimer right here and right now before this starts to happen because I've seen it happen on other channels and that. You, it is buyer beware. When you're buying a camera, you need to do your research and you need to make sure that, you know, the cameras are working and stuff like that. It's a, uh, it's a buyer beware market, no matter what it is. And that's, that's pretty logical and straightforward anyways, right? <laughs> so anyways, the, yeah, the winder, the winder is, once you use the winder on this, that's the first thing that you start noticing about this camera. And then the second thing you notice is, let me do that again. So, uh, so that that's on that's off that's on that's off some people if you're a, if you're a left eye shooter they didn't like this nikon system if you're a right eye shooter it doesn't matter it's got the professional round viewfinder very good viewfinder uh i don't know what else to tell you uh you know because basically there's so many different videos on these cameras uh, the depth of view is right here see everything in this camera is right right where you need it it has everything you need and it has nothing you don't need so that's what made this camera such a perfect camera and basically there is a lot of people calling this the most perfect camera ever made because that's exactly what it is it has everything you need and nothing you don't need so the professionals did catch on to them and quite a few professionals carried these inside their bags uh, you know as backup cameras and so uh, we definitely will be seeing more of this Nikon FE so uh, that's my uh, overview of the Nikon FE the uh, very solid all metal uh, Nikon Nikon quality through and through definitely I mean 1978 and it's still functioning like brand new today uh, all the speeds are accurate the meters accurate it's a <laughs> you know wow so here's another really good camera right keisha stop that here's another really good camera it, uh, it has an auto mode and it uh, the auto mode is actually an aperture priority there was no uh, full program mode yet on this stuff so uh, you pick your aperture 
it did the rest. But the uh, one thing a lot of people miss with these cameras is the fact that uh, this this one has a this one has an exposure lock. So you find the area you would like to expose for, expose, lock, recompose, shoot. And that makes this a very, very, very fast and accurate camera. So semi-professionals and professionals would just grab this camera and once they learned that, it was like, boom, bang, boom, bang, boom, bang, right? Because obviously they were all used to manual focus. So, uh, yeah, yeah, and I have to tell you, this is actually my favorite camera. This is, this, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the Nikon FTN. I like it as well because it's a bit bigger, so it has a little bit more hold. Uh, I think the one drawback this camera has is it's a block. It's a curvy block, but there's no, uh, there's no, you know, there's no hold. You could put a, uh, a, a auto winder on it. Uh, I'm not into that on these older cameras. Uh, the, uh, so there, there you go. That's, uh, that's my overview. So I hope you enjoyed that. Like, subscribe, and click the bell. There's lots of cameras to come yet. I'm trying to get them in as much as I can. Thank you very much. Have an awesome day. See you later.